Today, on behalf of everyone at UHN, I'd like to thank all of our board members for their knowledgeable and dedicated service to this hospital. I'm particularly grateful for their support and for their belief in what you all do here at UHN. They are superb volunteers who serve us all well, and I have known that Peter is very appreciative of the support that, that he's received from the board members during the past year as he seeks to continue UHN's long and proud tradition as Canada's leading research hospital. With that said, I'll now invite Peter to come up and talk to us about the accomplishments of the last year. Peter? Thanks. Okay. Um, well, I thought this was an appropriate title uh, because it does reflect um, a lot of the progress that we've made and a lot of the focus uh, that we brought to the organization as we've really been thinking together about renewing the organization, thinking about where we're going to take the organization going forward. And as we uh, do so, um, I think a logical place for us to begin is where we left off last year. And um, as we uh, concluded last year's AGM, this is the thinking and the framework that we laid out for the organization. And really thinking um, not so much about what we've done, but really thinking about the future and our real need as an organization to be famous for what we're going to do as well as what we have done. Um, thinking in both tenses and realizing the importance of preparing for an exciting future together. Um, if we think about this year, um, here's a map that shows some of the milestones of the things that we've accomplished together. Uh, the organizational renewal that we precipitated, really reframing um, how we're structured at the top of the organization, how we organize ourselves, how we think about our societal contribution. Uh, significant work that's occurred uh, with John's support um, and the board as we've really reframed how the board uh, really works together. Great work that we've done in the searches that we announced as we look for new leaders that will really help to drive the organization forward. And uh, clarity in terms of how we want to focus in, as an organization, realizing that um, all of us can work smarter, more efficiently, more effectively if we understand where we're trying to go. And trying to bring clarity to those goals, I think, has been a very important objective um, of our executive team. And then uh, laying the foundation for strategic planning through a participatory process of redefining our purpose, revisiting our values, and really thinking about the contributions that we make together um, as an organization for uh, Ontario, for Canada, and the global impact that we have uh, around the world. Um, when we look back um, at the year, here are a few UHN um, headlines that are jammed up into a wordogram or something that my kids would put together with software. And you can see um, as you look at these words a lot of the headlines that have appeared um, over the past year as great things have happened in the organization, amazing things like a hand transplant, incredible insights uh, like Don Weaver helping us to understand that we should all be using maple syrup in the morning uh, to ward off Alzheimer's disease. And um, just those great insights have helped me to move pancakes into my morning routine and to make sure that I'm getting my daily aliquot of maple syrup. Um, we, we recognize that this has really created global impact in, in really the vision of prior boards and, and this board as we look at the contributions that have been made and the incredible work that comes from our clinical enterprise, from the five research institutes, and now from the school, the Mitchner Institute that we've integrated with. I think it's uh, appropriate and absolutely critical that we acknowledge the great contribution uh, of what it really means to be part of something bigger. When we look at the capacity of the organization, when we see the impact of our 10 clinical programs, our five research institutes, uh, we've grown in the sense that we've added two educational centers through the Michener integration. We're now proud to have a school um, integrated with a health system, first in Canada, integration of this type. On June 25th, um, I'll be thrilled to be part of the Michener graduation, um, as I will be um, there watching a lot of young people that we're going to influence um, their entire lives through the work and through the education that we bring about um, at Michener. 
It's really our people uh, that make the difference in the organization. As we've been walking through the organization and talking to people, we've been emphasizing the importance um, of our people, and we're making investments um, in our people as we focus on the goal of team engagement and building capacity and capabilities in the organization that really will drive us um, into the future. I want to especially acknowledge uh, several people who are left the organization or are leaving now. Kathy Sabo uh, at the Western, who had extraordinary contributions uh, to the Western and has influenced its trajectory um, during that period of time. Linda Wright, who really led bioethics and who really helped bring an ethical framework to transplant and to the entire um, organization and has had profound um, impact um, on all of us uh, going forward. And of course, Ruth. Uh, who after 46 years uh, decided to leave me, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> having served five presidents uh, and having really been an incredible resource in the organization for so many of you in the room and so many of you who are watching in our other sites. Um, we know that this year was not without challenges and I think we live in a complex environment um, we are part of a dynamic society. We're part of a city that's changing. Uh, we're part of a province that's also moving uh, from a manufacturing and resource-based economy to a knowledge economy. And so we're seeing um, headwinds, but these are headwinds that are similar in many ways to things that we've seen in the past, uh, that we have the capabilities to address collectively together. Um, but I think it's important for us to really emphasize the contributions that have been made as we looked at the operating pressures that we face, the fiscal reality, the capital challenges um, that we will navigate uh, together, and the shifting external landscape as uh, the whole health system is going to be re-engineered likely in the fall through legislative change. And this really creates the raison d'etre for organizational change. Um, we have to be changing and adapting in order to be able to position ourselves uh, for many of these challenges in the future and in order to be able to put us on the trajectory that all of us really aspire to, the one that takes us uh, to a place where we are among the world's leading academic medical centers. Uh, I want to just talk a little bit about some of the milestones in particular. Um, the organizational renewal process, I think, was extremely important for us. Um, it creates the opportunity for us to revisit and revise um, our purpose statement. It enables a, a comprehensive approach to transformation that starts at the top of the organization with structural um, realignment and with uh, governance reassessment. It helps us to enhance our resilience. We're going to need that resilience uh, to be able to function effectively and to maintain our position as a world-leading academic medical center. And especially, uh, we want to be positioning ourselves for the exciting future that's coming as we look at genomic medicine, regenerative medicine, personalized cancer medicine, population health, the digital transformation that's going to take over the entire healthcare industry, and um, our own need to sharpen the focus on safe patient care, safety for each other, and for our workmates. Now, we've also been working, and this may not be completely transparent to everybody in the organization, with John's um, um, leadership and the trustees on significant uh, work at the board level. And I just want to highlight uh, that renewal process as well, because I think it really uh, deserves emphasis and impact. Uh, really, excellence in governance is a prerequisite for excellence in operations, excellence in management. Some of the changes uh, that we've heard about already include a new chair elect, uh, Brian, welcome. Uh, the new trustees that we have uh, brought on with additional skills, insight, and capabilities. Um, the need that we've had to change the focus of some of our committees. And we've seen the quality committee really renamed uh, as safety and quality, emphasizing that these terms are not interchangeable and that we have really a sharpened focus on safety for ourselves uh, and certainly for the patients that we serve. Terms of reference of that committee have been completely changed to reframe the focus um, of that committee. We've added an education committee of the board 
to embrace the obligations that we have to over 7,000 trainees uh, that we have in the organization at this time. And to really comprehensively approach the amazing opportunities that we have through the Michener integration, through our ability to really be the first in Canada to bring together a school of health professions uh, and a high performing academic medical center. And we have importantly a renewed meeting format with longer duration meetings. And this enables narrow and deep dives around strategic topics. These changes really position us with excellence in governance and the opportunity for uh, the new executive team to work in a completely different, re-energized, deeper and more strategic way uh, with an energized, high-performing board. We want to acknowledge uh, Rita, Jeff and Ken for their amazing contributions uh, to the organization, how deeply uh, thankful we are for your contributions, for everything um, that you've brought to the organization. We want to welcome uh, Peter, Cliff, and Lawrence. Um, we really look forward to great things um, as we move the organization forward and great things happen as a result of your insight, the contributions that you bring to the organization going forward. We want to uh, reflect on the transition that John just described for, uh, for all of us as we really transition the leadership uh, from John to Brian over time and where we really bring to the board fresh insight and perspective uh, that, uh, that Brian will bring from Scotiabank, from the insight um, that he has from the business community, and of course, from his own experience um, working with the board as a CEO. We've got uh, tremendous work that we've accomplished through the searches that we initiated for new leaders in the organization. Uh, we just announced uh, Mike Nader's arrival as the uh, EVP for clinical operations, and Mike comes uh, with tremendous background and insight. He'll be here in September, coming from Vancouver, where he is now a, a very experienced chief operating officer at Vancouver Coastal Health. He's got experience in many of the things that we need uh, today in our organization. Uh, things that include his experience as a reviewer for Accreditation Canada, his lean certification, the work that he has done previously setting up an enterprise project management office uh, at Vancouver Coastal Health. These are things that we already have in some ways as lean, uh, for an example, but things that we want to optimize um, over time. We definitely want to set up an enterprise PMO that will help us to really operationalize projects in a much more efficient way than we have through the process that we've historically used. Mike also has experience with sophisticated business intelligence tools that we want to deploy in our operational environment. So he described to us, for example, discharge forecasting software that predicts with a high degree of accuracy how many admissions you will have and how many discharges um, you will have. That kind of insight, that kind of operational intelligence will help us to operate more efficiently and really will help us to seek out the efficiencies that we need to meet many of the challenges uh, that we face um, ahead. We've also defined these areas of focus um, and we've done this deliberately because we want everyone in the organization to clearly understand where are we placing emphasis. We cannot do all things for all people. We must focus our attention and we must align the organization with these priorities in order to accomplish um, many of our goals and objectives. And I want to spend just a few moments um, walking through each of these um, areas to draw emphasis to the work that's been done already and the work um, that we have planned um, in the coming months. The first thing I'd like to point out is that we've created a website internally that's going live now, today, uh, where all of us can go for detailed information on these eight areas to better understand what are the goals uh, that we've put in place for ourselves, what are the milestones that we've linked to those goals, who are the teams that are responsible. Uh, for achieving, what are the outcomes we're looking to try to achieve, how are we going to measure ourselves against those outcomes. We want that information to be openly and transparently uh, outlined for the organization so there's a real clear place that everybody can go to get updated information on how we're doing against these goals. 
and that we can work uh, with the foundations in many ways to help align much of their work with many of these goals um, over time. We've talked earlier about the Safety and Quality Committee and the work that has really led us to the Caring Safely transformation that we're engineering in the organization. Uh, this has really been led at the board level through changes that I described a, a moment ago where the terms of reference of this committee have been changed, the focus and the agenda of the committee has been changed. Uh, we've done detailed cause analysis, brought that back to the board level in individual cases uh, that have very sophisticated, complicated mechanisms uh, for patient harm are being brought to the board level using sophisticated cause analysis methodology. When we do this, it helps us to understand the myriad of factors that lead to harm and helps us to understand that when we work on prevention, uh, we've got to work in many areas at once. And rarely, if ever, is medical harm a result of one single individual. We're moving away from a mindset of individual responsibility for harm and moving to a mindset of system thinking and sophisticated analysis, um, which we bring to the board level. The Caring Safely transformation um, has uh, been extraordinary. We really outline the reason for that um, at last year's AGM. And when you look at this slide, it really outlines the incredible work that's taken place under Emily Musing and her team. Uh, there's an incredible number of people that have come together to drive um, a lot of the progress that we've made um, over the past year. When we look at the infrastructure that we've put in place, the focus that we have on serious safety events, uh, the hack teams, uh, that Wing C and her team are leading as we're focusing on six hospital acquired conditions and working together to drive those to zero. The workplace safety work that we have underway under uh, Emma and Jeanette's leadership as we're looking closely at high injury rates in healthcare workers and doing our part to drive those down with the understanding that when we work together, we have the opportunity to drive those down by 80% or more. We've developed amazing educational materials and are beginning an educational program to help really drive a lot of these goals forward. When others in the sector talk to uh, me about the safety transformation that they're leading here, one of the most common things that they say is how incredible it is that two of the leading organizations in Canada, Sick Kids and UHN, are coming together uh, are teaming up uh, to provide safer patient care. And when we see this approach rolling out using a program that's co-branded in both hospital systems, rolling out at the same time, using the same language and terminology with trainees exposed to the same reporting mechanisms, the same culture, this has tremendous impact. and has impact literally from cradle to grave. When you look at the longitudinal uh, services that are provided throughout the health spectrum uh, and throughout the lives of patients who are seen and treated um, in both organizations. Our senior vice presidents have really led the adoption of safety huddles um, in each of the hospitals, bringing together operational and leadership teams on a daily basis to really look at operational and safety issues over the past 24 hours and looking ahead at the next 24 hours. This has real meaningful and tangible impact. As frontline employees have told me uh, the impact that this has had and what they have seen as they've seen the focus change when resources like a wheelchair are not available on a unit and that information is fed forward using the safety huddle mechanism, infrastructure like that gets fixed immediately. And that has real patient impact. That has safety impact over time. We can prevent infections um, through those uh, types of huddles. We can understand where there are defects um, in our infrastructure and move quickly to assess them. And I really congratulate the SVPs for their leadership uh, in driving this forward in every one of our hospitals. Patient experience has been a big part of, of our focus and Joy's team has really driven this uh, forward through the Partners in Care Roadmap that's been redefined for ourselves through the great work that Sharon's team has done uh, in patient relations 
as we really look to optimize the experience that patients have throughout the organization. We're going to sharpen that focus increasingly over the coming uh, weeks. And as we roll out an enhanced focus, and as we all, all of us, share a responsibility for the experience that patients have inside our organization. Good example of that is Desmond Dillon, um, who some of you from the general know. And Desmond um, described this experience to us uh, uh, recently. And you can see that when individuals um, who work throughout the organization feel collective responsibility for safe patient care and for enhancing the patient experience. And when someone like Desmond steps up as he did and as he's done multiple times to help navigate a patient who's lost or a family who's concerned about finding their way in the organization, this is what makes for great patient care. And this is really what makes for the incredible experience that we hear um, often uh, from people in the room um, who are patients, who have family members who are patients. This is the experience that we want for all of us, for our friends and family, and for every patient who comes through our doors. Team engagement has been a big part um, of our focus. And what we've been doing really is working with Emma's team, looking closely um, at what are these investments that we need to make right now to make certain that we've got the right people on the team and that we are really building capabilities um, in those individuals to drive the organization forward. This includes programs like our Emerging Leaders Program, uh, our Lead Up Program, the Rotman Program that we have uh, with the university. It includes sophisticated assessment of our employee engagement scores and structured programs that we're putting into place to really action issues that were identified in the context of the engagement survey. We will be placing a big emphasis on physician leadership development. Um, we're looking throughout the organization, identifying high potential physician leaders. Um, it's incumbent on us to really identify those leaders, equip them with skills and capabilities that they need to take bigger leadership roles in the organization and to really equip all of the leaders that we have um, in the organization with a basic set of skills that help them to function effectively um, as capable leaders. This um, is very important that we really invest in our people because it's our people that carry out the mission. If this is what employees tell me consistently they value about their experience at UHN because they see this as an organization that's interested in their professional and personal growth. Much work that we've done around clinical optimization as we seek operational excellence, as we work to address many of the capacity challenges that we have going forward, and as we work to really increase our efficiency um, over time by using and deploying tools that will help us to operate much more effectively um, with the same set of resources. And as we work to advocate uh, at the level of the ministry for more resources to deal with the aging population and the larger numbers of patients that we're seeing over time. A big part of our future really relates to our ability to manage the other important asset that we have, our data. And we have completed a, a very thorough external assessment of where we stand in that regard, benchmark, benchmarking ourselves against 26 other academic medical centers and understanding uh, where we need to make uh, changes over time in order to remain competitive as an academic medical center. This has resulted in a transformation plan that has been developed by the executive team and that has been approved by the board, enabling us to really look closely and understand how is it that we're going to need to change over time? How are we going to bring together all the resources that we have, organize them in ways that allow us to deliver on the mission and enable us to compete with other academic medical centers? Many people believe, including myself, that we don't have many peers in Canada. We're benchmarking ourselves against organizations in Europe, um, in the United States and around the world who are high-performing academic medical centers, all 
those organizations, the entire academic community is making these kind of changes. Uh, we need to make those changes too. It's going to help us to compete um, effectively and efficiently over time. The Michener integration has been extraordinary. When we look at what we've accomplished in just a short period of time, I've been at two of the uh, board meetings, the education committee meetings, and they've both been spectacular um, as we really look at what's been accomplished so far. And as Cliff and I looked at each other at the last meeting and said, wow, this is really moving a lot faster than we thought it was. It's really incredible um, what we've accomplished so far. Uh, under Brian's leadership, we're really working <clears throat> to engage the entire TASN community as we realize that this uh, is really a resource for the entire health sector. When you look at what we are producing, the caliber of product, the opportunity that we have to really take Michener and make it into an international brand, you can see that we've got incredible responsibility, outstanding people um, in place, and the kind of board support that we really need to drive um, these kind of changes forward. Amazing work. Um, that we've done in research and innovation. It'd be impossible to fit it in one slide. We could spend an hour um, talking about what we've accomplished there. But a few of the highlights are listed here. A pan-Canadian network that brings together 26 uh, universities and academic medical centers and over 70 different private and non-government partners to really bring together strategies to help people age with technology and figuring out how we can help them to age well, um, as the name suggests. Um, our work uh, with CCRM to really drive regenerative medicine forward as a completely new branch of medicine on an industrial scale with a cell processing uh, facility, with a partnership with GE Healthcare, with input from the federal government and our ability to drive forward regenerative medicine for cardiac disease, uh, for arthritic disease, for a whole spectrum of diseases, with us really leading um, this type of transformation um, in healthcare. And the amazing work that we have put in place to really set the foundation for the state of the art facilities, for the cyclotron and radiochemistry facility, this will enable us to really create fluorine isotopes and, and other uh, products that we can use for high performance diagnostics and for therapeutics. I want to talk a little bit about the external environment. These are some of the factors that we've been talking about already as we look at the new legislation, the patients first um, legislation that may be passed um, in the fall. Um, the strategic industry relationships that we are developing now with a number of different potential partners, including Boston Scientific, GE Healthcare, many others. Um, that we want to develop structured, strategic relationships with in order to drive the organization forward and in ways in which we can recapture the value associated with IP, intellectual property that's generated as a byproduct of those relationships. We're working in a complicated economic environment that all of us are very aware of. We're driving towards population health, something the board focused on um, at our last retreat. We're moving into a digital world uh, that will be so exciting as people interact with the healthcare system and ho hopefully with our organization on handheld devices and tablets. And that becomes a much more routine way of delivering healthcare in the future, where patients uh, and providers interact through e-visits and where we really work to manage much more care in the home than we do today. Now, our path forward is going to be driven uh, by focus in, on three big topics. And I just want to outline those uh, today for everybody's benefit. First, uh, on the formulation of a strategic plan. Um, that will be absolutely critical. And I think we're at the right time in the evolution um, of my tenure here to be beginning that in the sense that we facilitated the transition in board chair. We're in the final phases of recruiting an executive team and we're closing out the process of really defining our purpose, revisiting our values, and using that as the foundation and some of the key checkboxes that we want to have in place before we initiate a strategic plan. That's going to position us uh, for the future. We need 
to put together a master plan for facilities. Uh, many of you have been meeting with me, I've heard me say this many times before, uh, that we need a master facilities plan for how we're going to evolve um, our campuses, the Western, the University Avenue campus in its broadest sense on both sides of University Avenue. And we can't be um, doing one-off projects here or there. We've got to have a comprehensive facilities plan that looks 20 years into the future and defines using our strategic plan the programs that we have, what are the needs that we're going to uh, put in place for the population? How are we going to meet the needs uh, of the growing population here in Toronto and meet the ambitious aims of the programs that we have? And, and lastly, we need a plan for capital. Uh, we need a long-term financial plan. Uh, I want to put into place a, a plan where we look very closely and very strategically at public-private partnerships, or we look at bond financing strategies in order to position ourselves uh, to invest um, in the future. We're not going to be able to do this very easily if we're completely dependent um, on the ministry or on government to do this. And we're going to need to look collectively uh, with uh, management and the board for creative ways, new ways that we're going to get the capital that we need to redevelop our facilities and to execute our strategic plan. So these three elements that we've outlined here will be a very important part of our work um, going forward. Now, a lot of the foundation for this has been laid out through uh, the process of defining our purpose. And many of you in the room are probably aware of the importance of this. I just want to emphasize uh, how important it is um, yet again some of you have seen this video, I'm sure, from Simon Sinek. It's been viewed over 27 million times, uh, probably by many of you. And it really makes the point uh, that why is extremely important in high-performing organizations. When you look at companies like Apple or Google, um, you really understand that these high-performing companies really understand this um, intrinsically. And as, uh, Simon Sinek has said, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. That is the really important part. And when you look at these three circles that, that he has really developed through his three circle model, why is really in the center of this and why drives everything else, uh, including the how and the what. So our focus on defining why do we exist as an organization, why are we here, will be an incredibly important part um, of positioning ourselves for the creation of a strategic plan. This has been an amazing process as we watch it unfold through the organization, through the launch, through the Pathfinder group, and through a series of open houses that have been held at all of our facilities. That's really uh, looking at what we're doing is building a foundation or creating a strong trunk uh, that creates these leaves that are the fruits of our labors that really rest on the underpinning of the organization, which are these values and the purpose that we're going to define together. So I just want to share a short uh, video that will uh, outline the importance of this and the great work that's been done. went back to the literature and really looked to see in organizations that did this well, what was the methodology that they used. So we actually found uh, one or two tools that we've incorporated into the work that we've done related to um, best practice and validated and reliable tools. To aid in the recommendations around the development for UHN's purpose, values and principles. We were able to demonstrate what the uh, part of the organization would be, what the core and enduring values would be in the long term. Words are very powerful and can evoke strong emotions in people. Teamwork, compassion, caring, valuing employees, trust. 
UHN as a leader in its field. Servant leadership, positive leadership, and connections. We heard from many participants that they felt valued, that they were asked to join in this important discussion. The other thing that really stood out to me is how surprised, pleasantly surprised people were with the format that we had chosen. Many people came prepared to attend a meeting and to be spoken to about PVP, but to come and be able to socialize and interact with the different activities and with one another really made a difference to people. It affects all of us and it's important because it's the touchstone for everything that we do. It brought me back to the very essence of why I'm here and how I can make an impact both personally and collectively. Um, I think it was an opportunity for everyone to reflect and contribute in a meaningful way. Overall, I would say I feel a greater sense of connectedness, which I think is important, and I'm really confident in what's going to come out of this. It was really fantastic to uh, see this and to attend many of the sessions myself um, and to see the engagement uh, of the employees as we work through the initial phases of this process. Um, I won't read all of these uh, for you, but I will leave this up for just a minute for um, all of you to just look at some of the feedback that we've received because it really is so meaningful and it really does illustrate um, the impact that this has had on frontline employees who've been really part of this process uh, as we've worked to really engage them um, as well as our leaders in really defining um, our values and thinking carefully about what we do together. Now the next stages in this, as we're collating a lot of the data over the summer, we're ramping up to a second phase and that will be uh, a process that really brings this digital and creates a social media experience for all of us as we'll create a defined period of time likely in the fall and create an opportunity for all of us to go online together at the same time and that we will over a 48 hour period of time or a 72 hour period of time a defined period of time come together and be able to contribute uh, digitally to a lot of the insights uh, and a lot of the values that we're working on together. So that, for example, if we want to drill down on what does integrity mean, um, we'll have Justine Jackson go online for an hour and talk about what does integrity mean to me um, in my role. And then we'll invite uh, people to really talk uh, and to be able to contribute in that way through social media channels in a way in which we can enrich um, our ability to gather data from all parts of the organization before finishing this out. So if we put all these pieces together, uh, things that we've been talking about, and we look at it in a linear way, what we're really talking about is positioning ourselves in these steps with the organizational renewal that we've been talking about over the past year, uh, with the setting of the framework for our purpose, our values, and our principles and then by moving towards those three elements that we spoke about a, mo a moment ago, the strategic plan, the master facilities plan, and the financial plan. And that um, really will bring it all together. This will be our path forward. So I'd like to close just with this thought, um, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Peter. That was very informative. I think uh, I'd just make a couple of comments from the board's point of view. I mean, this is very exciting times we're going through here. I mean, we've had a fantastic decade in terms of the organization, in terms of building up to a new platform, and now we've had sort of a change in management. We're going through a change in the board. We're developing a new business plan for the next 10 or 15 years. So it's, these are very exciting times, and so I wish I was here involved in all of them, but. <laughs> But I am pushing to make these things happen, so it's, it's wonderful to see that it is, and I think you're all going to uh, be part of it, and I think it's really going to be very exciting. So, I'm envious. <laughs>